In this lesson, we will look at the navigation display, ND. We will see how it displays a range of information traditionally displayed by different conventional instruments. The ND displays information in one of four different modes. Rows, Arc, Map or Plan. Each mode displays the information slightly differently. You should select the mode which is adapted to your flight phase. To change the mode, use the Mode Select switch on the EFIS panel on the glare shield by the Flight Control Unit. Select each display on the Mode Select switch and watch the ND change. Then select the forward arrow to continue. You must select the different modes on the Mode Select switch. The Rows mode is similar to a traditional HSI display but contains more information. Arc mode shows a portion of the Rows display plus or minus 40 degrees of the aircraft's heading. You will use map during most of your flight. It is a moving map which displays the route ahead as entered on the FMCs. Now we will look at how specific information is displayed in each mode. We will start with plan mode because it is the most different from the others and it is the one which you will use first while on the ground. Plan is a display of the flight plan as inserted in the FMS. Normally you use plan mode to check the validity of the flight plan pre-flight. The primary flight plan is always shown as solid white lines and the secondary plan is shown as cyan dashed lines. Plan is the only ND mode orientated to true north. Notice that the other cardinal directions are also displayed. If you switch to plan during flight, you can see the aircraft's position, indicated by the moving yellow aircraft symbol. At the moment, the aircraft symbol is replaced by a yellow circle because the IRSs are not aligned. In plan, the reference, or central waypoint, is always the waypoint displayed by the second line of the flight plan page on the control and display unit. You can change the geographical scale of arc, map and plan by using the range selector knob. Change the range of this display. No, you should have selected the range knob on the EFIS panel. Do this now. No, you should have selected the range knob. The information is much easier to see. Now we're going to look at how information is presented on the ND, starting with the common symbols, which are displayed in all of the modes, except plan. Rows, arc and map are orientated to a white turning scale marked in 5 degree increments and labelled every 10 degrees. The model aircraft is aligned with the aircraft's current magnetic track and not its magnetic heading. The track index is displayed as a green diamond. The yellow lubber line displays aircraft heading. The angle between the lubber line and the track index is the drift angle. The selected heading is shown as a blue bug. Wind velocity is displayed in all modes. Wind velocity as a digital value is shown as true bearing, but the wind arrow shows the wind's magnetic bearing. 
When the aircraft reaches about 60 knots indicated airspeed, the actual wind is displayed, as calculated by the FMS. True airspeed is displayed, as derived by the ADC, and the ground speed, as calculated by the IRS. The values are replaced by dashes if the information is not available. The ROSE display is based on the conventional HSI. It is the best mode for performing radio nav procedures such as a beam checks and the only mode which displays ADF. ADF-1 is shown as a single magenta line and ADF-2 is shown as a green dual needle. The digital value of the selected course is displayed in blue on the top right of the screen when in VOR or ILS modes. In this example, it is a VOR course. The selected course is also represented as a pointer called a dagger. The center part is a deviation bar. There are also white dots to denote lateral deviation. There is a VOR NAV ILS switch on the EFIS panel. Switch it to each position to see the effect on the ND or select the forward arrow to continue. In NAV mode, only the ADFs are shown if received. This is ILS mode. The dagger is pointing to the course set on the ILS box and the value of the course is represented in the top right hand corner. If ILS is selected, the glide slope deviation scale is also displayed. In VOR mode, the course deviation is shown like ARC is a typical glass cockpit display. It is a segment of the ROSE display, 40 degrees each side of the aircraft's current heading. ILS and VOR can be displayed in the same way. The differences between ARC and ROSE are ADF cannot be displayed in ARC. ARC is not the best mode to use to monitor an abeam check due to the limited sector. You can change the range in ARC but not in ROSE and you can display the radar image. The operation of weather radar, WRA, and explanation of its images are covered later in this chapter. When approaching your target altitude, the yellow banana will appear. This is the altitude interception arc, showing you where you will be when you reach the target altitude. The yellow banana only appears in arc and map modes, it does not appear when profile mode is engaged on the FCU. The yellow banana shows you the predicted point at which you will reach your selected altitude based on the aircraft's actual rate of climb or descent. The distance to reach selected altitude can be judged by the banana's position in relation to the range arcs. The banana will respond to any change in the rate of climb or descent. In this case, we are climbing. If we increase our rate of climb, we will reach our selected altitude in less distance, 
and the banana will move closer to the aircraft symbol. Finally, we will look at the map mode. This is the normal mode for most of your flight. It can also display weather radar. The map display looks similar to the ARC, except map does not display VOR or ILS deviation. Map always shows the flight plan and secondary flight plan if selected, using the symbols common to plan mode. There are other symbols common to plan mode. On this display of Biggin Hill, you can see, for example, tuned nav aids in blue, waypoints, a flight leg, and a holding pattern. The flight plan is presented graphically so that it moves in relation to the static aircraft symbol. Look at the ND here, before and after turning on the runway at Toulouse Airport. There are five keys on the EFIS panel which enable you to select optional information. You can only select one at a time. Select each button now or the forward arrow to continue. Constraints are superimposed onto the flight plan. You would normally select this option at takeoff, climb, descent and approach. This is the end of this lesson. Select the forward arrow if your rests are displayed. All VOR and DME in the area will be displayed. All non-directional beacons in the area are displayed on the ND. Airports, which are not part of your flight plan, can also be displayed. This is the end of this lesson. Select the forward arrow if you're ready to try the quiz.